Hello, Anselm Griffin here with his occasional series of YouTube tutorials for MATLAB. Today we're doing the Fast Fourier Transform and an extension of the one I did last week. Today is the 7th of September 2019 and I just want to give some intellectual property accreditation here. So I took this example from this book. The code is there. Or the, look, the www is there. Uh, on GitHub. Uh, there's the actual script and there's the other github there so there's where the code is given and there is some of the book and it's this example here that I'm looking at so I'm going to shut all of them down and I've published the code here in MATLAB you can see it there but I think it's easier to see the published version here and we're just going to run through it and see what's going on. Okay, so we've tidied up and we've cleared the workspace, etc. And there's the book given the full credit there. We read in the cameraman. There we do the fast Fourier transform. We center it. And then we do a subplot there. And just if we scroll down a little bit, there's the original image. Just there in 231. 232 is the Fourier transform of the log scale. So, because the dynamic range is so big, we have to do a log to get any sort of viewable content. If you didn't, uh, you just see the circle in the middle, and that'll be just the DC component. And in 233, we show the log scale of the centered image there. Okay, so we can see that centering will lead to better results. It's going down a little bit on this line here. We inverse Fourier transform it, and we're plotting the inverse Fourier transform in two, three, four. So two rows, three columns in position four. There we are. I am show image one, which is the inverse. For your transform of the non centered image, the square brackets there give us the most dynamic range of it there. And then in 236, we uh, inverse Fourier transform it and we uh, center it. So we've seen that before. Now for the new bit down here, we're going to do a simple convolution here. So we get X, D, and Y, D. Now remember, size A. The cameraman is 256 by 256. So XD is going to be 256. YD is going to be 256. X here is going to go, when we do this little conversion here, we're going to go from minus 128 to plus 127. And the same for YD. We get the mesh grid. And on this line here, we're getting uh, the frequency filter. There. So there we are, and we get the frequency filter on that particular bit there. We see it underneath now in a second. And then here we do the inverse. Uh, on the non-centered, we do the inverse Fourier transform with the frequency set with the frequency filter on the non-centered image. And here we do the inverse Fourier transform on the centered image you can see centering leads to better results so in 131 we have the filter which looks like a bit of an old gaussian there's the non-centered image not a great idea it doesn't lead to the best results and there's the centered image which does indeed look like a gaussian filter okay i may have gone a little too quick you know, I assumed we know what the dot multiply is, but at this level, you know, if you're looking at frequency filters and inverse Fourier transforms, I assume you know what the dot multiply is. Okay, so I hope that helps a little, and thanks very much for listening.